Okay, so I'm not sure um, how many of you have come tonight because of the talk, uh, promoted as being Finding Purpose, and how many of you are here because you love to chant, um, and maybe, you know, kind of feel like my life's okay, I'm not seeking any purpose any more than what I already have. So, um, what I'm hoping is that this will, even if it's not something you've thought about, that it will give you some food for thought and hopefully some understanding or greater understanding um, when you maybe have friends or, or relatives or family that actually go through some serious questioning in their life and maybe feel purposeless, feel that like there's no meaning to their life, people can get sometimes into some really dark places and it's important that we don't brush people off when they're going through something like this, something that's as deep as finding purpose or having purpose in life. Because if we don't have purpose, we don't have anything, right? If there's no meaning and purpose in our life, it can feel really like a gut-wrenching, aching, really painful time, right? So, like I said, I don't know how many of you have been through it or going through it, but um, it's such an important thing that we should discuss. And it's natural, it's natural for the soul to want purpose in life. This, this is like a, a vehicle, this is a car we're using. And sometimes people, or pretty much most people, go through life and we're, we're fed these ideas of of um, what life is about, you know, like the Australian dream um, to buy a house. <laughs> Ask all the people who've got one how satisfied they are with their mortgage and <laughs> the responsibilities of maintaining their own property. Um, you know, the, the purpose in life, we can be thinking, you know, it's, I just want to be happy. That's the most basic thing. But I wanted to read you um, a quote for you to consider by Steve Jobs. Well, it's um, Last Words by Steve Jobs. And it's quite long, so I, I'm just going to say some of it. Um, so I don't know how many of you know Steve Jobs or know of Steve Jobs, I like guess, creator of Apple. Anyway, these are some of the words, his last words before he died, and I think they're relevant in our talk in connection with finding purpose. Um, just because of the, what's taught in society and taught to us about finding purpose. I have come to the pinnacle of success in business. In the eyes of others, my life has been the symbol of success. However, apart from work, I have little joy. Finally, my wealth is simply a fact to which I am accustomed. At this time, lying on the hospital bed and remembering all my life, I realize that all the accolades and riches of which I was once so proud have become insignificant with my imminent death. In the dark, when I look at the green lights of the equipment for artificial respiration and feel the buzz of their mechanical sounds, I can feel the breath of my approaching death looming over me. Stop pursuing wealth. It can only make you a person, sorry, it can only make a person into a twisted being, just like me. God has made us one way. We can feel the love in the heart of each of us and not illusions built by fame and money like I made in my life. I cannot take them with me. I can only take with me the memories that were strengthened by love. This is the true wealth that will accompany you. He will give you strength 
and light to go ahead. Whatever stage of life we, where we are right now, at the end we will have to face a day when the curtain falls. Please treat everyone well and stay friendly with your neighbours. So right at this moment, we're not on our deathbed. We do have some time to contemplate what is my life about? What is my purpose in life? You know? So I'd like you to all close your eyes for a minute and just think, what is my purpose in life? What just comes to your mind immediately? You know, most people it will be, I want to be happy. I want to be loved. I want to have relationships that are kind, caring, considerate, where someone loves me and appreciates me for who I am. I don't even have to pretend to be something else. We may think that my purpose is to take care of my family. My purpose is to make money, to try and get ahead in life and be successful, maybe not as successful um, as Steve Jobs. Or maybe, maybe that is your goal. We may, may, we may want to be successful at our jobs and careers. But ultimately, we all want happiness. We want peace. We want contentment. We don't want our mind to harass us, always coming through with some new thing that we should have to do, we should do or could do. So I really encourage you, maybe after tonight, to think about it some more, think about your life. The reason I wanted to speak on this subject, I've, I've mentioned this before, was I was talking to somebody who, a young person who had a great job, had a wonderful wife, had a little child, a nice house, you know, everything, everything superficially seemed perfect, right? And he said he was in a really dark place because he didn't have any purpose, you know, he had the things that society and he thought that he wanted, that these things, you know, these, this is my purpose in life, you know, to have, to have a good job, to have a wife, to have family, to have a nice house and everything. But it was just empty, so empty that he went into a dark place. And so it's really important that we don't think that I'm okay right now, so I don't need to worry about it. But if our life is based on, or our happiness is based on temporary things, then our happiness will be temporary. That makes sense, right? If my goals are some temporary situation in this world, based on the body really, trying to make the body more comfortable or, you know, have some recognition or whatever it might be, then that happiness is not actually going to touch our heart. It's not really going to satisfy us. It's not going to bring us that fulfillment, the security that we need. There will, will always be some sort of feeling of I need more, I need something, I need I need something, I need something to satisfy me. So the real purpose of human form of life, as taught by all the great spiritual teachers, is, is self-realization. And we might go, self-realization, what does that mean? I know who I am. <laughs> I see me in the mirror every day, right? But it's actually self-realization and God-realization. It's the purpose of human form of life. 
So this rare human form of life is given to a soul to make spiritual advancement, to have our purpose in life being to understand who we really are and to cultivate and re-establish our relationship with the Supreme Friend, our eternal Supreme Friend, the Supreme Being, that it is actually the goal of life. And all the other little goals that we might have, you know, and nothing wrong with them, but just don't make them your goals. You know, in the sense of, you know, they can be the temporary goals and we can appreciate. Maybe they'll work out, maybe they won't. But it's not like your life is based on them. And if you don't get those situations, or, you know, relationships or whatever, then it's not, you don't want your life to fall apart or to feel like, I don't have anything anymore. I don't have anything. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a scary place to go if a person doesn't know that that feeling of emptiness, that gut-wrenching feeling of something's missing, I don't have a real purpose other than eating and sleeping and going to work and paying the bills and you know, being nice to my family and everything. If we don't actually find our real essential purpose, that purpose of the spirit soul, then we feel lost. And any time that you feel lost, you feel like you're you don't have a direction, you don't know where to go, then we're just kind of at the whims of of society and the whims of the of the weather really, you know, just getting blown this way and that. We can so easily get blown off course. And so it's important if we can try to understand. One, I am not this body. So material acquisitions, material positions, jobs, name, fame, like um, Steve Jobs experience, they don't actually do anything. They don't do anything for you, the soul. So as an eternal spiritual being, not this hunk of flesh, I need to re-establish my relationship with God and I need to see every person, every living being as a spirit soul, part and parcel of the Supreme Soul. And within every living being, there's an expansion of the Supreme Soul, known as the Paramatma. And that Supreme Soul is within our heart. He's right there, always wanting to give us solace, to give us guidance, to give us peace and happiness, to be there as our friend. And when we appreciate that He's in the heart of all living beings, then naturally we would treat all living beings with kindness and respect and love. And when we do that, when we're cultivating our lost relationship with God and seeing others as a spiritual being, our life will be filled with happiness that's not dependent upon anything. Your health, right? That is one of the things that people think of is like, you know, my goal in life is to be healthy. It's like, good luck. <laughs> you know, the body is destined to fall apart. You know, we might keep it healthy for a while and we should try. You know, but it's, you know, if we get some nigger told we've got cancer or anything, you know, it's kind of like you do your best and you realize this body is temporary. You know, how am I going to, how am I going to deal with this challenge? It doesn't need to devastate us because we know it's like my car's breaking down. That's all. My car's breaking down. It might be a really valuable car. It is a really valuable car. <laughs> this body is a super valuable car. I, so it may be breaking down or maybe you've been, you know, the jobs that you had and, you know, some people have jobs for a really long time and they just get laid off, you know, and then they feel like, you know, I don't have any purpose anymore. You know, people look forward to retirement and they get to retirement and it's like, I don't have any purpose anymore. <laughs> My purpose was working, right? <laughs> you know, so it's really important we go on an inward journey, really make sure that we go on an inward journey and daily 
the meditation practice that's um, recommended for this day and age, this busy day and age, is to practice japa meditation using beads, japa mantra meditation. We've got, we've got the beads here and we can tell any of you how to practice afterwards if you'd like to learn. But to sit and practice meditation, resting your heart and mind in these sacred mantras, and do it every day, that will give you a sense of purpose and meaning. And then getting together with other people and practicing meditation at kirtan, so these two practices of using mantra meditation in your daily life will give you the purpose, the peace and the happiness and the inspiration to keep traveling on your spiritual journey because the whole world's going a different direction and you know it can be difficult to stay on track. But if you regularly practice mantra meditation, regularly, daily, daily practice, then your real purpose in life will become more manifest. You know, when we know that we're an eternal spiritual being, part and parcel of God, our natural function is to serve, to serve God and to serve others. And then when we know that, that that is our purpose, that purpose will give us complete happiness, complete peace. So even though you may be just beginning your spiritual life or you may be you know, grade five or whatever, you spiritually you're on the right track and it's just a matter of trying to stay on track. And that's easier if you regularly practice mantra meditation. Thank you very much. <laughs>